Hi, this is Alex McCord. And Simon Van Kempen. We'll be reading Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, and we'd like to dedicate this to our sons, Francois and Johan. Jim Hawkins was an apprentice pawnbroker in the British colony of Antigua in the Caribbean. One day, Mr. Johansson, the pawnbroker, came into the store carrying a big, heavy trunk. The trunk was old and rusted, and it seemed like it was covered in dust or sand. What's that? It looks like a box of old junk. Old? Definitely. Junk? Well, that's for you to figure out. Mr. Johansson dumped the chest on a bench. This is from that old widow, Mrs. Blue. With her husband gone, she figured it was time to sort out his belongings. I told her you'd have an appraisal of its worth for her by the end of the week. Jim sighed after Mr. Johansson left. Mr. Johansson was a kind man and a good boss, but Jim wanted more for his life than following in his footsteps. He wanted to walk on sand no other foot had ever imprinted before. He wanted adventure. He had been appraising objects from the chest when he came across something that didn't seem to belong with all the assorted trinkets and odds and ends. It looked like a scrap of paper, yellowed with age and rolled up tightly. As he unfurled it, he saw a picture of a chain of nearby islands. On one of those islands, there was a large red X. Though Jim had never seen anything like this before, he knew what it was. It was a treasure map. Jim knew that this was his opportunity to have a real adventure. Mr. Blue must have been none other than Bluebeard the pirate, fearsome predator of the seas. He brought the map to Mr. Johansson and explained his theory. Mr. Johansson said nothing, but instead closed the shop, rolled up the map, and grabbing Jim by the arm led him down to the harbor. Once there, he looked up and down the docks, though Jim hadn't the faintest clue what he was looking for. Finally, they stopped in front of a ship. This one looks sturdy, and the captain looks like he's seen his fair share of sailing of his day. Indeed, the captain looked hardened with experience and salted by the spray of the sea. We'd like you to take us out to these islands, Mr. Johansson told the captain, pointing to his map. The captain's eyes widened with recognition when he saw the map, but he said nothing of it. Instead, he asked, What business do you have on those islands? No one goes there anymore. That's private. Just know that you'll be handsomely compensated once our business is done. The captain smiled a grim smile. Don't worry, he said. I have no doubt I'll get paid. All aboard and we'll set sail immediately. They had sailed long into the night when Jim and Mr. Johansson decided it was time to head to their cabin below deck and get some sleep. When they woke up, they discovered their map gone and the door to their cabin barricaded from the outside. We've got to get out of here, Jim screamed. It looks like there's only one way out of this room. Help me loosen the store. Together, they managed to push the door open and get back up on deck. What are you doing out of your room? The captain asked, clutching the map tightly in his hand. Well, no matter. It just saves me the trouble of having to fetch you. Why did you lock us up? What do you want from us? Jim asked. The name's Long John Silver, the captain explained. And I'm the meanest pirate in all the seven seas. Or at least I was. Old Bluebeard found a fortune and treasure. But when I tried to steal it off of him, he wound up destroying my ship and ruining most of my crew. He left me with nothing. I had to build myself back up again from scratch. But this map, he continued, shows where he buried that treasure. And neither you nor anyone else is going to get in my way. Captain, land ho said a crewman from the crow's nest. Ah, oh, we're close to the treasure. Time to get rid of you. The pirate forced Jim and Mr. Johansson onto the ship's emergency dinghy and began to sail towards land. Jim, how well do you remember that map? Mr. Johansson asked as they were bobbing up and down in the little wooden raft. Like the back of my hand? He replied. Why? I have an idea. Mr. Johansson removed his large puffy white shirt. Hold the other end of this. He explained to Jim. And we'll use it like a sail. Our boat is much smaller and weighs less. So maybe, just maybe, we'll get to the island before them. Sure enough, their little boat flew across the waves and they landed on the beach with time to spare. Now we get to work. Do you remember where that treasure is buried? Mr. Johansson asked. Well, yes, moaned Jim. Well, as I recall, it was through the woods and 50 paces west at a group of three trees. Excellent, cried Mr. Johansson. They ran through the woods until they found the trees. Locating a sharp stone, they managed to cut the trees down and cover the land with dirt and leaves, so it appeared as though the trees were never there. Then they continued on to the treasure and dug it up with their bare hands. Then 
They fashioned a sled out of sticks and palm fronds and pulled the big iron treasure chest along on it so that it wouldn't leave telltale tracks in the dirt. They waited with their treasure in a hidden part of the tree line for Long John Silver to land. They watched from a distance as he and all his men ran off the boat, practically tripping over their own feet down the beach and into the jungle in search of the treasure. So great was Silver's desire to find it that he had every last man join the hunt, leaving his ship unguarded. Dragging their booty behind them, Jim and Mr. Johansson boarded the pirate's ship with their treasure and took off for home leaving Silver only the beat-up dinghy. When they returned to their pawn shop, they sent word to Mrs. Blue to come by. They told her all about how her husband was Bluebeard the pirate and showed her the treasure they had unearthed. The three of them decided to split it evenly, three ways. And Jim was able to live out the rest of his life rich in both treasure and adventure. The End